everyone, my name is Garmin and welcome to another episode of the New Leaf Podcast, uh, which is my podcast about knitting and crocheting. I'm I'm Carmen, I'm a knitwear and crochet designer over at New Leaf Designs, and you can find me at newleafdesigns.nl, that's my website and also my Instagram handle. Um, so this is episode 103, and my co-host is here. <laughs> it's very rare that she makes an appearance, so I hope she stays. Um, so today I have some progress, some progress to share with you, uh, and also some hand eye yarns going into my shop, so that is very exciting. And also one purchase, because I went to the Hanteag booths, which was... In February I think yes beginning of February and in Zwolle and I went with my mom and some friends and yes I was very well behaved I only bought one skein of yarn um, so yes very much in line with the year of using what I have so uh, over on patreon I'm hosting the year of using what I have where I am attempting to use as much of my stash yarn as possible um, and also to kind of well yeah also to finish as many whips as possible but mostly to get as much yarn out of my stash and into projects um, and then actually finish those projects. So yeah, that has been very rewarding. We are in March in month three. So in January we looked at uh, de-stashing. Just any yarn that you don't use, bring it to the thrift store. That's it in a nutshell. And then uh, in February we were identifying the yarns that we do want to keep. And uh, I'm, I'm giving you some ideas for what to do with difficult yarns. For example, yarns with different textures or different colors than you're used to, and I'm giving you some ideas of how to how to use those, how to modify the yarns that you have, possibly. Um, yes, and now in March, I wanted to talk about color. Um, I did also talk about color in February, but I mean uh, over dyeing, uh, as in if you have a yarn that you don't really use, and you could over dye it in a different color, but. Here is my spinning wheel. Um, some of the viewers of the last podcast episode spotted it. Yes, it is a Luet S10. I got it second hand. Um, very much, I like it very much. Highly recommend. Uh, but yes, my one of my difficult yarns is on there. Uh, and um, because I'm spinning a thinner yarn from a thicker yarn, um, that was very much like a pull apart yarn so yeah it kind of baffled me that I knit something with that in the first place but uh, so I need to finish spinning up all of that before I can over dye it um, so yeah I put that on uh, you know that's postponed for now but uh, so now in March I am wow the Sun is just <laughs> coming out <laughs> hello <laughs> So you might just see like a white triangle here. Let me just fix that. Right, so I fix it a little bit. Um, I don't have curtains in this room, so I just put tissue paper on the windows. So yes, it looks very ugly from the outside. I'm sorry to my neighbors. Um, that's just how I deal <laughs> with the sun uh, when I'm either filming or um, taking pictures. So yes, how have you been doing? Uh, I can't remember what I was talking about. Probably the one yarn that I got. No, the year of using what I have and the over dyeing. Yes. So uh, I'm postponing the over dyeing of the yarn of the difficult yarn, and instead, I've been working on some, on some stash busting projects, and it's been feeling really good. <laughs> and. And um, yes, yeah, so I have been using a lot of my Lopi yarns. So I had a lot of Let Lopi, I had a lot of Alifas Lopi, and I used uh, a lot of those already in my punch needle rug that I think I showed you in my previous episode. Um, 
one, 102, so go and watch that. Uh, I will put a picture up here, um, because I don't want to clickbait you. Um, so, Punch Needle Rug, really cute. Um, the whole process is on Patreon, and yes, the seven day, seven day trial is still active on Patreon, so if you haven't tried it yet, you can try it for free for seven days. Uh, this will not be available forever, um, because, yeah, I should not give so much away for free. So get those seven days while you can, so you can kind of get a feel of what it's like. I have tons of master classes and other knitting tutorial videos on there. We have full uh, walkthrough videos of my around the world sweater, so you can knit your first colorwork sweater with me uh, in, uh, in the round from the yoke to, to the hem, and you do short rows and um, yeah, and there's a full knit along for mittens, also colorwork mittens, and uh, a lace shawl. There's so much on there, so just take a look. And if you don't like it, you can cancel within those seven days and you won't be charged. Um, so the full process is on Patreon. And after that, um, I still had quite a bit of yarn left uh, because, you know, the rug was only about, like... <laughs> I haven't I haven't measured it maybe like a meter a meter 20 by 60 centimeters maybe um, so it wasn't that big but it still used up quite a lot of yarn about four 400 or 500 grams uh, and then I thought well I quite like this rug I want to make another one but uh, I chose not to do a punch needle rug but a crochet rug and this I've already shown on my Patreon page as well because I want them to get the first scoop um, so oh there's still a spot of sunlight left from between the layers of tissue paper uh, so yes I just crocheted this rug in the round I started with 12 DC that is double crochet in US terms and treble crochet in UK terms 12 in the center and then uh, you increase by 12 every round that is basically the pattern um, am I hoping to write it up yes will I I don't know because I say that about a lot of things so I so yes um, it is a very simple thing you just increase every round by 12 and um, I only crocheted in the back loop because I really really like that uh, really like how that looks oh mama I love Momo so much um, so yes and for this rug I used 600 grams um, of my let loop yarn, which is great. Um, the difficult thing about this rug was that I couldn't really calculate how much yarn, well, I, I could, I could, I definitely could, but I didn't calculate how much yarn I would need for, for each round, so I just kind of winged it, and, uh, which means that I have some you know, I have some odd quantities left of some of the colors. Um, so yes, but it was great to use up just a bulk of yarn. Um, most of the Lopi yarns, so I used Lead Lopi and Alafaz Lopi and, wow, Momo, very gracious. Um, <laughs> So I used Alifaz Lopi single-stranded and Lead Lopi double-stranded. Um, and each ball is about 50 grams, so that means I used up about 12 balls of yarn. So that's very nice. Or are they 100 grams? I don't know. But 600 grams for one project is quite nice. Yes, I'm getting fluff up my nose because Lopi sheds quite a lot, I think. Um, but I'm I'm having um, I have this rug in my office right now, and every time I walk across it, I'm just like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so I might just make another rug 
who knows because they are such great stash busters they are great for bulky yarns they are great for yarns that are too scratchy for blankets uh, because I wouldn't really use Lopi for blankets um, so yeah perfect for rugs and I do have some other yarn that might fit the bill so I might just do that right so I have my new progress report right here but I can't really show you because there are some secret projects on there and I don't want to get in trouble so here are the ones for January and for March it's pretty much the same long list so in January my total was 21 whips and for March my total is 23 whips although I might have missed one so that might be 24 um, I finished four projects since my last um, progress report of which at least two are secret secret projects and the other two are the two rugs so <laughs> you're all up to date on that um so now on to works in progress and <laughs> so sorry and one of the works in progress that i showed you last last time i keep wanting to say last month but it was january that i did the last progress report and yes i am using a shoe box uh, as a project bag because I really like boxes to keep my project in um, because I can easily take it downstairs and yeah so my Saga cardigan which I am making with Ba Ram Yu wool in their Titus range and which is discontinued I think um, I don't remember the colorway names. I know one of them is Bramley Baths, but I don't remember if that was the mint green one or the lavender one, and yeah. Uh, the pattern is Saga Cardigan by Wench, uh, Wench Rowald uh, for Jerbogan. Jerbogan. Um, and yes, let me take it out of the box to minimize the noise. And yes, I, so, uh, I sticked it, uh, and I haven't posted the videos yet because for some reason taking, like filming is easy, but then editing and, you know, deciding, ah, that's, it just, I find it so difficult. <laughs> so that's why you haven't seen a sticking video yet. And I finished one of the button bands this morning because I left it untouched uh, from the end of January and I just felt ashamed. So um, I finished the button band this morning. Uh, so that's the left one, right? Uh, so I only have the button hole band left to go, which is this one. And I did about nine rows of ribbing. Uh, yes, but let's show you. And it looks kind of wonky because I haven't blocked it properly yet. And the button band is not blocked at all. So that is kind of scrunching up, which is to be expected. But I like it very, very much. Um, <laughs> and I already have some button choices laid out here, but I think that that will be the next procrastination station um, because it'll just be another decision I have to make, which will probably cause this cardigan to be in a box for another month. But I kind of don't want to do that because um, this cardigan, I am, I am find myself wanting to reach for a cardigan every single day. And I have, um, I, I have two hand knit cardigans. 
uh, one of which the sleeves are getting very tight and one of which and the other uh, the the kind of button bands are like always rolling over so that's very annoying and I have to button it every time but the button holes are getting a bit too loose so then it unbuttons okay and um, the other cardigan that I really like to wear which is store-bought but is wool um, I got it from a French supermarket and I love that <laughs> and I love it even more because I'm gonna tell you a story okay so I had uh, it's a gray cardigan very thin um, but and it has some lace up on top but it was very warm because it has wool and I love that because here in the in the Netherlands whenever you see like garments especially like in I mean, we don't have garments in supermarkets here. I love that about France. But, you know, the kind of cheaper end, it's always going to be cotton. Uh, and I, I don't like cotton for things that are supposed to keep you warm, because cotton doesn't keep you warm. Um, so, I was really happy to find this. Um, uh, and it was discounted because a button had come loose. And, of course, no problem for me. Uh, but I had not, we were on holiday, I had not taken any thread. And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll split some of the wool that I have. Uh, but since we were in France, uh, and I mean, I, all, I buy this in the Netherlands anyway, but uh, we bought those, uh, like a box of La Vache Kiri, uh, like the little mm, pizza points, the little pizza shapes of cheese cubes and how do you open a box like that can you tell like do you already know uh there's like a little thread like an actual thread no plastic that like goes around and you kind of pull that thread to sever the, the paper around and then the box opens and that thread uh which is bright red uh, I use that to sew on the button and I love it. So yes, um, even though the cardigan is star-bought, I love wearing the cardigan because it has a little half touch. touch. Um, so, <laughs> um, I wear that cardigan a lot and you know, with stuff that you wear a lot, most of the days you can't find it because it is somewhere in the bottom of a pile or in the washing and yeah. So, what I want to say, I find myself looking for a wool cardigan every day almost every day so i think i want to finish this really fast because then i can actually use this one that was a really long-winded way of saying that but hopefully you appreciate it <laughs> um so yes let me just try it on for you so you can see what it looks like yeah so as i mentioned last time the sleeves are very tight. There is no ease, maybe even negative ease. Um, but I haven't blocked it. I haven't really blocked it yet. I've only blocked it very uh, carefully because um, you don't want to over block something because then you can't go back. But you can always block it a little bit. And then if it's not loose enough, you can block it more. So that's what I did. Um, this is the needle that's still attached to the button band. Okay, Momo wants to sit behind me on my chair. Hey? Um, right, so I do, like when I was knitting this button band, it looked like it was very wide. But now I have it on. I think I could have done with two or four more rows. And I just I just really like it. And it really goes with this skirt as well. Um, yeah, so I might have to unpick the cast off and do it a little bit more but I also think that I might be able to get more out of the width by by actually blocking and of course yeah so this has to line up because this buttonhole band is going over that 
But yeah. Oh, Momo. She has barely left any space for me. Momo. <laughs> hey, ow! Momo, <laughs> I knit about nine rounds of ribbing, uh, which um, it doesn't say in the pattern how many rows you need to do. Um, it just says uh, the last row is on the right side. Work back and forth in ribbing. Right. But then for the buttonhole band, it says make buttonholes on rows four and five. So. But I'm using a thinner yarn, so I'm uh, doing my own thing anyway, because uh, I have a thinner, uh, tighter gauge. Um, yeah, so I would need to do more rows anyway. Right, and then, so the inside, I don't know if I'm showing you this actually. The inside, there are, so you can see where I've cut it. I do remember that there was one spot where it was kind of precarious, but I think I fixed that. And if not, I'll come across it some someday. Um, right. And I am doing the bind off for all of the ribbed parts with Lori's twisty bind off which I also have a tutorial for, and I will try to remember to put a link up here. So Lori's Twisty Bind Off. It's my favorite bind off for ribbing. You can use it for either one by one, two by two, you know, any kind of ribbing. Um, and it doesn't flare when it's unstretched. So, so I really like it for socks as well. I used to do the Genie's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off, but I find that it flares when it's not stretched. So. Uh, yeah, I didn't really like the look of that. And I know you're gonna ask me about the Italian bind off. I haven't tried that yet. Um, I've only come across it a couple times uh, the last six months, so I I will try it at some point, but yeah. So, and as for buttons, I have three different options. And for two of them, I kind of have to ask myself if, if they are enough because I only have six of those. So I have six of these. Does it focus? Maybe if I put them in. So six of these and six of these. Very nice. And then I have these very simple wooden buttons it doesn't really focus yeah so I really like those and of these I have eight so this might be the winner but they also might be too big so, yeah, I'll figure it out. And then the ultimate finishing touch is this. So I have a ribbon with my initials. These weren't made for me. So it's CJ. It might be CI actually, but I'm choosing to see CJ in there. Um, and I found this at a fair, at a craft fair, and each time I finish something, I cut one off, and then I sew that to, you know, where, uh, you know, where the label would be usually. And I find that really cute, so that's what I'm going to do. So, the cardigan is going back 
in its box uh, because I actually have way more important stuff to knit than the cardigan, but I felt ashamed to not at least have a bit of progress. So uh, one other thing that I've done that I can show you are these super cute squares with apples. I love apples. I mean, it's no secret, but I love apples. So, yes. Uh, and what brought this on was that, you know, for a, for my Patreon, the tiers are named after apple um, varieties? Apple species? No, not apple species. Uh, apple, yeah, varieties. So we have Jona Holtz, um, Golden, Golden Delicious and Elstach. And so both Elstach and Unigold are red and Golden Delicious is yellow. Um, but I want to do a couple more before I decide which one is which. And I just thought it was so cute. Um, yeah. No pattern for now, just... I used multiple strands together and it is made with intarsia. I really like them. So I wanted to show you. It would be so cool to have like an apple sweater <sighs> but I don't know I probably should not think about new projects right now um, so uh, I'm gonna show you one more project and then I'm gonna show you the yarn that I'm putting up for sale today so um, I don't know if you recognize this this was part of my statement sweater that I wore to the Breidage last year. It had a sheep in front and it had um, um, text on it like knitwear, care repair, uh, wool is the future. Um, so yeah, and I saved those. I didn't unravel those. I saved those. They're here somewhere. Um, but I... Um, you know, because it is a statement sweater, I just wanted to keep the statement panels and then re-knit the sweater so that I would actually wear it uh, to kind of be in line with the year of use and what I have. And oh, yes, <laughs> um, yes, to actually use what you have. So also to use the garments that you have. So here there's just a little bit of text left on the sleeves. It says wool. Um, and yeah, so because the, the yoke is quite colorful, uh, and the sleeves are almost all in one color, I wanted to do the body in this color as well, but I only had a little tiny bit of that yarn left. I think I have some here. Yes, this is the yarn that I used. It's very, uh, how do you call this? unassuming it's very very bland uh, but you know that's great it makes the other colors pop so it's kind of a brown but it's also kind of a pink um yeah it's like a layer of pink and then a layer of black so maybe they used darker sheep uh wool for this to dye with um, so, yeah, I wanted to get some more, but this yarn, I bought it in Norway, and I think it is from Lofoten, I think. Um, it was very expensive. I got two skeins, uh, both were dyed with matter, um, and the one skein was like very bright matter, um, and that was that one was called puffin i think or at least it had a puffin on the 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 ball band and this one was called rust um but yes very expensive 
uh, I remember, oh, okay, hmm. well, okay, I will pay for that. <laughs> so I wasn't really keen on finding the exact same yarn and paying that much again and shipping. So, so I thought, okay, um, it is very rustic yarn. Um, I bet there will be some, um, some kind of similar yarn at the Hansweg Bruce. So I was going there with my mom and some friends in February and I had this little piece with me and uh, it was great because I could just match it to the yarns and that way I also kind of did not feel a pressure to buy stuff. Because usually when I go to a yarn store or a yarn fair, it's not that I want to buy everything, uh, but it, it's that I feel bad if I don't. I feel bad for the shopkeeper. <sighs> and uh, yeah, there are some things to unpack there. Um, but with, with this in hand, you know, they could easily see, okay, she's looking for that, so and we don't have that, so it's fine. And it kind of, it kind of, yeah. Uh, and I also did find a match for it, so that was great. Um, so I went to the stand of Scapius Wool. Scapius Wool. And look at this. Oh my god. See? This one is a little bit more brown, and this one is a little bit more pink. Um... So there's kind of more yellow in this one, but I don't think you can tell. And I do think this one is a bit more, uh, a bit thicker, but uh, we can make that work. Um, I'm not too bothered about that. I might just hold it. No, I, I'm not gonna hold it with something else because that would change the color, but I might just knit it at a tighter gauge and it's fine. Uh, so I got one, one skein, and yes, this is also dyed with matter, so that kind of um, explains the match. It's hand dyed, and I believe this was hand dyed by Sarah Jane, who works at Scapius Wool. So she used to have a, her own hand dyed uh, yarn business, and then she kind of merged with Scapius Wool. So now uh, they have their you know, their established colors, and then their um, a hand dyed range, which I really love. And it's 100% Dutch. It's from the De Hondspool. Uh, I think it's around Utrecht, but I'm not really sure. It's 400 meters per 100 grams, and yes, 100% wool. I love it. Uh, and yes, you might also know them as Trollewool. So, very nice. I will be finishing the body of the sweater with that and I'll just, I think I'll just knit until it's gone. And also, oh actually, this color, this background here, that is the other Norwegian color that I got. So I got this one and I got this one. Okay. Um, so when I was knitting this sweater, I was knitting it bottom up. And I didn't do as many short rows as I usually do because I just wanted to get it done. So I think I might just uh, do, just redo the last stripes um, to get that extra height in the back neck because I have some hand knit sweaters right now that are just kind of <laughs> pinching just right here. And yeah, I, I want to do it right. So that is another work in progress and that is the one that was missing from my list because technically well it is on the needles so that kind of makes it a work in progress right so yes i have 24 works in progress now and now i want to show you the yarn so uh last year in in maybe september october i found some more of my undyed yarns. I thought I had dyed them all, but I hadn't. And so now I have a couple more skeins going into the shop. And the reason why it has been so long from when I dyed them to now uh, is because, I'll, I'll just show you the yarns. 
So all three colors are made with matter. I love matter. I'm mad about matter. <laughs> um, so this is kind of showing up very orange, but that might just be my camera. It might, it might be good on the actual screen. Um, but I have true to color pictures to go in the web shop. Uh, so this is the first dye bath with matter. So it's very, it's very bright. It's the most solid I can make this. Uh, it might have some lighter spots here and there, but that will kind of add to the charm of it. Um, very, very nice. Then I have the second dye bath. So it is less bright, see? Uh, and it is kind of more variegated. Um, yeah, you, you can see that. So very nice, kind of a even more hand-dyed effect. And then I had some more matter and I over dyed some skeins that I already had. So um, this is, these were yellow and then with the matter they turned orange, kind of like this terracotta clay color. I really, really like them. They match great with all kinds of blue. It's beautiful really really like them so yes the reason why it took so long was that um, when I originally dyed them I knit up this hat very cute hat uh, and I thought oh this is perfect I'm going to do it the proper way and actually release a pattern with the yarn and um, you know make kits or whatever and Ah, uh, problem number one, I have too much on my plate. Uh, problem number two, I would have to write up the pattern, which doesn't really take a long time, but it's just a hurdle for me. Uh, problem number three, there's a contrast color, and I did not have enough of this particular contrast color to make all of the kits so some of them would have to be gray and I you know uh, and then the contrast color would have to be like half a skein so I would have to reskein all of that and the problem with reskeining things is that you know um, it's too much work to do as the orders come in you know on demand but if you do it all beforehand and then you only sell two of them then you're left with all of these half skeins uh, and i just it was too big of a hurdle for me uh and i left it and then i left it too long and i was like oh but you know uh, christmas time is over and then oh the cold season is over no one's going to want to make a hat i was seeing all of these problems uh so i just thought i'll do it the easy way and that's how i'm doing it so um i will be putting these up on the shop that is newleafdesigns.nl slash shop and then you can click on so you you'll immediately see loads of patterns loads of pdf patterns but in and on the left hand side you can see the category hand eye yarn and that's where you want to click if you want to find these uh easily uh because all of my projects are uh, products are sorted a to z so you would have to go to I don't know if I named these hand eye yarn or matter dye yarn, but anyway, you can find it in the hand eye yarn section, and I of course will link it down below. But uh, yeah, if you're watching this on your TV, then it kind of won't help you that much. <laughs> I have five skeins of the really bright mohair uh, matter. I have five skeins of the variegated one. And I have three skeins of the terracotta orange one. So take your pick. Uh, and yes, I have discount codes. So usually my hand dyed yarns are uh, 27.99 euros. Um, if you buy one, I'm giving you a discount of 10%. And the discount code for that is MAD. <laughs> And if you buy two or more, the discount code is MADDER, 
<laughs> I love puns, and it will give you 20% off. And no, the 20% off discount code matter doesn't work if you just have one thing in your basket. So, uh, mad for 10%, matter for 20%, and that's from two skeins up. And I only ship within Europe just because stuff takes too long, stuff gets lost, I get anxious. Uh, so within the Netherlands it's 5 euros shipping and within the rest of Europe uh, it's 9 euro 30. Um, yeah, so I will leave the link down below. Um, yes, I hope that I can edit this video before I put the yarns up. Maybe yes, maybe no. In any case, don't hesitate if you want any because um, I do really think this was the last time <laughs> I'm selling hand dyed yarns. So if you want these, and I mean, they are a beautiful color. Mm. It's a beautiful spring color. And yes. I just need to get these out of the drawer because they also like occupy a space in my mind. Right, so. Now I'm going to edit this video, then I'm going to do what I actually need to do alongside uh, putting the yarns in the shop. Um, write up a newsletter. Yes, if you aren't subscribed to my newsletter, you are missing out. Um, so be sure to subscribe to my channel, but also to my newsletter. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And yeah, I hope you're doing, doing well. Uh, if you're in the Netherlands, go and vote today. <laughs> uh, yes, I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.